In this video, we're going to discuss how we implement our design digitally. To get started, we will go ahead and get the appropriate software from FreeCAD. So you can go to their website, freecad.org, and download the appropriate version for the software or operating system that you might be using. After you've appropriately installed the software, please go back to our engineering content website and click on this link. It says, following the YouTube video below, which is the one you're watching, create your design geometry in FreeCAD. Please download and start with this FreeCAD model. So you can go ahead and click on it, and then it will do something a little bit strange and show you a Google Drive interface and all these different files. You're actually only downloading one file. In order to do that appropriately, go to this tab that says download, and then you're going to download one file that has all this information inside of it. We'll click Save As and save it to none other, the desktop. So now that it's there on the desktop, this is this is what it's called. It's wide dog bone underscore 231009B. We'll double click on this to bring it up in FreeCAD. Now, FreeCAD is an open source piece of software that allows us to both design parts, make and, and perform simulations, along with a bunch of other <laughs> very nice features, for example, drafting, which is what we're seeing here. If you go to the workbench tab right here, okay, we're going to be using not part, but part design. So click on part design there, okay? Then we can click on model and we can click on body and voila, we see something that looks like a three-dimensional depiction of the dog bone that we've been starting with in our cutting and designing. What we are going to do is modify this dog bone to have the properties that are those that we calculated and then be able to use this dog bone for simulation in the subsequent video. Now, I realize that many of you may not have a nice mouse with you at the time of this lab or this session and so what I'm going to try to do is use the keys or the, the button presses that might be amenable to uh, what you might be doing on, um, on a laptop okay, without a nice button and a, or a nice mouse. So I'll try to do that carefully. What we're going to do essentially is, is remove or cut out geometry that then gets us the cross section that I've been talking about in the prior videos. And what's interesting, one of the interesting features about FreeCAD is that, yes, it is a graphical user interface, but for those of you who are more interested in computer engineering or computer science, it does run on Python. So you can have it record the commands it's performing in Python and then run them later if you so desire. So what you can do is you can go to view and you can go to the panels, and then you can add a Python, con a Python console here in the bottom right. And I guess I'm, I'm covering this slightly. Maybe I'll move myself up here a little bit, just like that. So if, if you like, you can, you can see what's going on in the right. We're not really going to use this. It's just for you to know that, yes, there's actually a script or a set of commands that are, are being uh, used as we proceed. So at this point, what we can do is get to looking at the bottom, okay? At least there's this cube right here. And so what I did is I just clicked on the one that says bottom. And I am going to, again, uh, just f use the kind of slow commands. I'm gonna go to the standard views and I'm gonna go to fit all, and it's gonna move it in the middle. And then this is a key press, all right? So I'm gonna do control, okay? And then I had to do shift to get to the plus. So it's control, shift, and then it's actually the plus sign over the equal sign, it may be different, but the control plus allows us to zoom in. So now 
what you should be seeing is that we've zoomed in on our profile. At this point, what we want to do is click on it and create another sketch. So you come over here and there's this item. It may not be in the same exact spot, but it's something like a rectangle and a circle and they're red and we click create sketch. That allows us to begin to make a sketch on this bottom surface of this profile. And what we're going to do, because I talked about making those arcs, right? For us to get a cross section with a width of 7.6 millimeters, we're going to go ahead and create those, those arcs and we then remove that, that material. Now this may not be the most efficient way to do it, but I think it's pretty simple. So please, please bear with me. I'm going to move, actually I'm going to move myself so that you can potentially see things a little bit better as well. Okay, I'm going to cover the Python con console. Here we have the option to put in points. If you look at this over here, so I'm going to be a little bit primitive and I'm going to put a point over here, kind of a little bit to the left and above the center. I'm going to put one a little bit to the left and above the center. And you're like, why am I doing it over there? It's because I'm going to constrain it and I'm going to do a little bit with the dimensions in just a minute. Okay, but I'm going to put those two points. Those two points are going to be where we have the narrowest gap in our sample. I'm going to put another point over here, another point over here, another point over here, and another point over here. Okay, so I've got six points and they're kind of roughly spaced uh, with three above the middle line and three below. Now, very important, I'm going to use this tool right here, which is constrained vertical distance. Okay, not this one. We're going to use this one in a minute. You could, it doesn't matter, you could do either of them first, but just to follow along, make sure you click this constrained vertical distance. Then, very carefully, I'm going to click on the center dot. This is the center of the entire part, the way I defined and made this part, it's the center. So if it shows a sign, you're not on it. It's like a, I don't know, no crossing or something sign. But if I move just a little bit off of it, okay, now I'm able to click on it. And same thing here, I'm gonna then click on this point that I made over here. And then something comes up and asks me, hey, what length do you want that to be? And that's not drawing another line, but it's asking me, hey, what's the length, what's the distance you want between that point and the middle of the part? Well, remember we said 7.6 millimeters for my design, all right? So I'm gonna do 7.6, but I'm gonna then do a slash two, okay? So I'm gonna do 7.6 divided by two. I'm gonna let it calculate it out, all right? And then if I do control plus over here, Control shift plus, okay, I can see that it's about 3.8, or it should be exactly 3.8 millimeters above that center point, okay? Now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna zoom out, control minus will zoom me out a little bit. All right, so control minus, control plus, or zoom. I'm gonna do the same thing for this point below. I'm gonna go over here, and I can just type 3.8 millimeters, if I like, that's the same thing as 7.6 divided by two. Hit return, that's an okay. For these corner points, what I'm going to do is click in the middle and then do a, a click on this one. So you have to click on each of these distances appropriately. And I'm gonna put 7.5 millimeters, okay? Because the width of this sample is seven, is, uh, 15 millimeters so I can go seven and a half each way and that's important when you're doing your design right you should measure before you can't make a cross section at least with the samples we're using here and that are given in this this lab we can't use ones that are close that are narrower than 15 millimeters I do the same thing click in the middle click on this one and I'm also going to do 7.5 millimeters on that one I'm going to click in the middle again I'm going to click on this bottom right one, again, 7.5 millimeters. I'm going to click on this one. Oops, see, I got to get it in the middle. No, 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 there, that's the middle. And then click on that. 
Oh, it didn't work. I got to do it again. Click in the middle. Click on that there. 7.5. It's a little, you know, you got to be a little bit sensitive and click on it very precisely. Don't get too frustrated if it messes up. Okay. So now I've got the vertical positions of these points defined appropriately. And what we're going to do is we're going to end up creating an arc through an arc on the top and an arc on the bottom or a circle on the bottom and a circle on the top through these three points. You can define a circle through three points, right? But now I, before I do that, I'm going to define or constrain the horizontal distances. So I just clicked on this horizontal one and now you can see that it's not going to be constraining the vertical, but the, the, the horizontal. So again, I click on the middle and in this case, I click on that point that I had kind of above there. And now I'm going to put the length to be zero. And you may be thinking, oh, there are other ways to do this constraint. Yes, I, there, there are, and, and you're welcome to try them. But for now, I think this is the fastest way to get the job done in a clear explanatory fashion. Um, so let's do this other one over here. Uh, it didn't quite work, so I'll do it again. Click in the middle. Didn't quite work again because I wasn't quite there. There. Okay, now uh, this one I'm going to say is 30. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the same thing. Say 30. So 30 millimeters from the, the center. I work I'll try again try again there now 30 and then middle again this and this is a little bit tedious and you can see that even I'm having trouble um, trying to get there if I there that one's good and you can zoom in better if that suits you okay and now I've got my points where I want them. 30 millimeters from these outer points horizontally, which are also seven and a half millimeters from the center vertically. And then I've got this 3.8 millimeter, 3.8 millimeter uh, distance between the center points and a vertical uh, direction. Okay, And it's of course aligned right in the middle. Those points are in place. Now I'm going to go over to the circle option and I'm going to create a circle using three rim points. So you got to go down to here, click on that. And now what am I going to do? I'm going to click on this point right here and you can kind of see that it makes when I'm on it, it makes this little additional uh, curve with a point on it. I come and you're like, oh, that looks horrible. That's not what I want. Well, then I add another one, which is going to be not the middle, sorry, this one right here above. And then I come over here and I get this right one. And it makes that little symbol and whammo there. Now I've got this big arc. I'm going to do the same thing down here, picking up this point if I can find it yep there it is I'm picking up this point and I'm waiting till I see that arc on the kind of bottom right of the cursor where the point and whammo okay so I've got all these points and these two curves and you may think this was a lot of work well I think this is one of the simpler ways to do this type of uh, removal remember what we want is for the middle to have the the narrowest region that we were designing for so now we're going to close and we have this new sketch here that we are going to now use to pocket or remove material from our dog bone so we come over to this pocket command and it's already been this sketch is already selected i click on this and what do you know it went right through and Wow, it puts some nice curves. Now you, there are some little, little kind of interesting corner features in the in here and here. Um, they could be a problem for this particular geometry. We're going to go ahead and leave them in. They don't turn out to be an issue. 
the the length here this is how much the pocketing is going to have you can leave it at the default of five we're not going to create a uh, we're not going to create a part I'm not planning to create a part that's greater than five millimeters in thickness okay you know everything should be less than less than uh than you know like half a millimeter probably okay so I'm going to do okay and so that's that now there is an issue if you come over here you'll see it now if I click on the up key all right on this this cube click on this little up thing you'll see oh this part is pretty now click on the down it's kind of thick well we should do something about that we need to make sure the thickness is appropriate for what we're trying to accomplish so we're going to come up here and underneath body you'll see this first pad this is where I created it a while ago you'll see if you double click on it so I just here come over here click on double click on pad you'll see that it gives you a length this is actually the kind of the extrusion length it's not a length this way it's the length vertically so we're going to specify what if you remember from the previous videos we had it at 0.3 millimeters so we're just going to do 0.3 millimeters like that and it made it thinner if you take a look you can see that so if I click up here oops on that yeah now it's thinner than it was before I click back down a couple times and now I've got the same profile that I've been looking at at this point we are set with our geometry and we'll go ahead and, and stop this video and then explain how we're going to perform the simulation on this with the appropriate loading in just a minute. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video.